Today we are going to learn how to solder wires together to get the best and strongest connection every time. This video is going to be extremely easy to follow and don't worry if you've never soldered before, you're in the right place. For the beginners out there, you might be wondering what is soldering? Well, soldering is basically just using a super hot soldering iron to melt metal, known as solder, onto two or more wires. Sometimes it can be used on chips like Arduinos or even Raspberry Pis. Now let's go over all the materials you will need to start soldering. Of course, everything I mentioned will be in the description box down below. First, you will need a soldering iron. Mine has an adjustable heat setting. This isn't that necessary as most soldering irons are hot enough to melt almost all kinds of solder. Also, make sure that your soldering iron has removable tips. We will explain why later in the video. Second, you will need solder. Solder is the metal that we will actually be melting to fuse the wires together. There are several different kinds of solder. Always make sure that yours is rated for electrical wiring and not something like plumbing as it could damage the wire or the insulation. Also, quick tip. Most solder has lead in it. There are options to get lead-free solder, but in my own experience, I found that lead-free solder tends to be weaker than normal solder. So if you tend to put your wires under a lot of stress, you might want to stay away from lead-free solder. Third, we will need either brass wool or a wet sponge so that we can clean our soldering iron. Over time, the tip of your soldering iron will get extremely hot and leftover solder will begin to pile up. This causes the tip to decay over time. When the tip decays, it stops the soldering iron from heating up to its full temperatures and won't allow you to melt the solder. But don't stress when this happens, it's normal. To prevent this, we need to keep the tip clean and that is why brass wool is so important. You can also use a wet sponge for this. Just keep in mind it is not as good as steel wool because when the sponge is wet, it can transfer moisture to the soldering iron, which can cause iron to rust or corrode over time. This can be a problem as you may need to replace it more often if it becomes damaged by the moisture. Fourth, the most efficient way to access the copper inside the wire is a wire stripper. You guys can get a much more subtle one than I have here, or you can just use a pair of pliers to peel away the insulation. Any kind of wire stripper should work for your needs. Now, the fifth thing you guys will need to solder is a workspace with very good lighting. This isn't extremely important, but it does make the experience much more easier and more enjoyable as time goes on. The sixth thing you guys will need on the list is something to hold your wires. Now, guys, if there's any of you out there saying, well, I'll just solder my wires on my desk, please don't do this. I used to do this when I first started soldering and I damaged my desk, I damaged my wires, and I damaged my soldering iron. So please do not just solder your wires directly on your desk. Get something to hold them so it's kind of like they're floating in the air. It will be so much easier and some of them even come with a magnifying glass like the one I have right here. Trust me, guys, this will serve you well in the long run. Now guys, this last thing you're going to need is a little bit more optional. Uh, I only recommend it if you intend on waterproofing your wires or if you just want a cleaner look to your soldering job. My best recommendation is heat shrinks. You just apply some heat with a lighter and they shrink to seal the wire. Just make sure not to go too close to the wire or hold for too long as you can melt the insulation. Alright guys, now it's time for the boring part, the safety precautions. Uh, so the soldering iron gets extremely hot, so please be careful and always make sure your soldering iron is unplugged and cool before replacing or touching the tip. Also, since the fumes created from soldering are deadly, I uh, strongly recommend a ventilation system. Here's an example of what I use. As you can see, it does not need to be super high tech, just a simple filter to suck up the fumes so you don't inhale them. Also, if you're soldering on a wood table or just any table you don't want damaged, I would recommend getting a soldering mat so you don't burn the table as sometimes you might melt a little too much solder on accident, which will end up leaving burn marks all over the place. Now guys, to simplify this whole process of getting your safety equipment and gathering all the tools you'll need, I would just recommend buying a really nice soldering kit from Amazon, like the one I have right here. Uh, of course, I will link one down in the description below so you guys can go and check that out after the video. All right guys, now let's get into the soldering process. So what I'm about to show here is a mechanical connection that you see happen very often when soldering. This connection, you're not gonna wanna do. Um, it's pretty good for just testing conductivity between wires, but as you can see, it just comes apart way too easily when I pull on it. The best mechanical connection I can recommend, and the one I use for all my projects, is this one right here. So we're going to start by making an X in the middle of the copper tips, and then we're going to just take each opposing side and overlap it over the other. As you guys can see here, I'm doing it in the video. We're going to want to make sure that the connection is super tight and there's no wires being frayed out on the side. This way it'll set you up for a very strong connection and a very well done soldering job. 
Have your soldering iron at the ready. First, we are going to do what is called tinning the tip. This is coating the soldering iron in solder, which will increase heat transfer efficiency. Now, a lot of people tend to melt the solder on the soldering iron and let the melted solder fall on the wires. Don't do that. It is much better to heat the copper wiring with the soldering iron from the bottom, then push your solder from the top. This way, the melted solder bonds and weaves through the copper wiring, creating a much stronger connection. Make sure not to melt the insulation or burn the wires for holding your soldering iron on them for too long. Once you've done this, you can slightly pull your wires to ensure they are secured to one another. Now, dab your soldering iron in the steel wool or the wet sponge, depends on whichever one you're using, to get rid of any excess solder in the tip. Now, turn it off and securely set it aside. Now, to cover up your soldering job, we can use something as simple as electrical tape. This is a very solid option, but the cons of electrical tape are that it can come undone over time and it's mainly used for temporary holds for wiring that won't experience much stress. If you want to step up your game, need to waterproof your circuit, or need an option that will just ensure your wires will stay together over time, the best choice is a heat seal. In terms of maintaining your soldering iron, you're going to want to keep it in one of these cases or one of these soldering stands like this. Whichever one you choose, just make sure you keep it in a safe and clean environment. In terms of replacing your tip, a good rule of thumb is to replace it when it's not melting the solder as well as it used to, or when you start seeing the tip decay. Personally, I always replace my soldering iron tip before every soldering session. This way I ensure every connection is very strong and to the best quality. All right guys, that about does it for this tutorial. I really hope this video helped you guys out. Of course, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I will try to answer every question I can. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Subscribe for my engineering content.